Good evening, folks, and welcome to tonight's City Council meeting and Committee of the Whole meeting. The City Council meeting is called to order, and I kindly ask our City Clerk to please take the roll call. Bruno? Bruno here. Burkhardt? He is out. Ruby? Here. Cabin? Here. Kilberg? Here. Kasarag? Here. Malaja? Here. Marks? Here. Mayor? Here. Swanson? Here. Ladies and gentlemen, we begin our city council meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance. I would like to ask our friend and two-time Special Olympic gold medalist, Ben Blumond, to please lead us in the pledge. Thank you, Ben. And to my other Ben friend, what do you think, big guy? Ready to start the video? We're ready to start. Right. We've got a little uh, preamble here before we recognize Ben formally. We've got some cool video regarding the 2022 Special Olympics Winter Games held in beautiful Galena. And then we've got some still shots of Ben and then we're going to invite Ben to the podium. Does that sound good? Yep. Oh, I know. <laughs> That's why I'm so worried, Ben. That's... There you go, folks. Ben, come on up to the podium, man. Okay. Pardon me, sir? Is this, one right here? this one right there. Okay. Now, Ben, I understand there's about 450 athletes that participated in those winter games. Is that right? Yep. And you, sir, are a two time gold medalist. I am. Uh, yes, you are. In the 800 meter and the 1600 meter mm -hmm. snowshoeing mm -hmm. competition. For those of you who don't know, 1600 meters, that's a mile in snowshoes. Yep, <laughs> it is a mile snowshoes. That's gotta be brutal. It was, it was pretty brutal, but it was fine for me. Yeah. I enjoyed it. And you told me before the meeting that you only started snowshoeing pretty in, recently. In November, in 2021. <laughs> Only. So a little over a year you've been snowshoeing. Um, no, only a few months, actually. Oh, so, oh November of 21. Forgive me. <laughs> so so you, you take up this snowshoeing thing. Yep. And obviously you're a gold medalist. Yep. So it's, it's clearly natural talent. Oh, it sure is. Oh, it, just <laughs> it just magically appeared out of nowhere, maybe. Yeah? It just and came to me like that when I started. Do you own your own snowshoes? Oh, what was that? Do you own your own set of snowshoes? Yep. You do. I got, I got, I got a couple different sets. You do. Mhm. Mm I got, I got quite, I got a couple gold ones and a pair of white ones actually. You're kidding. I'm serious. Are you you <laughs> mean? Now, where do, where does one purchase snowshoes? I, I truly don't know. Um, there were some online, and I think okay. there's some at Dick's Sporting Goods. Is that right? So you spent money in Geneva, which we're grateful for, <laughs> and you have two pair at home. Yep. Did you wear the same pair for each race? I did. You did. Mm -hmm. Are those are those now framed somewhere in your house? I will frame them, but I'm gonna retire the shoes in them, and I'm just gonna put it somewhere so I can like say for my first ever state title in snowshoes. Unbelievable. And they yeah. were in a pair of gold shoes that were blue, and they were like the best train flats in the country last year. Really? And I uh huh, and I ran in them. Good lord, because you were a runner too. Correct. Because you and I have seen each other at lots of, uh, of uh, cross-country events. Yep. Over the years. 
I, I believe we have. Yes, we have. In fact, I think you and I were at the donut stand at one of those. Just Oh, we were at the donut stand. I remember. Remember that? We were at the donut stand eating the donuts while everybody else was running? Oh, yeah. That was an incredible experience. Yeah. The donuts on the mirror. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my blood sugar level was unbelievably high that day. I raised it up real high for you. Yeah. <laughs> Did you work it off afterwards? Did I who do what? Work it off afterwards. <laughs> it burnt, it what are you, what right are you trying to say, Ben? <laughs> it must have burned right off. Clearly you did. That's... Clearly you did. <laughs> and it just burned off in under a minute. Yeah, well, Ben's a 2017 graduate of Geneva High School. That is correct. That is correct. Go Vikings. Go Vikings. Mm -hmm. Are you cheering on the girls tonight? Um, the from a distance, because the girls are playing in the sectionals tonight in Bartlett. I am cheering them on from a distance. As, as am I. Yep, as am I. As am I. Now, Ben, you and I have known each other a long time. Yep. And I've always thought you were a pretty cool guy. Thank you. I think you've been cool, too, Mr. Mayor. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me give you five bucks to make sure you say everything correctly. <laughs> Your dad was so proud to email me about your success in Galena. Yep. And your dad was equally kind and generous to allow me to invite you here tonight. He sure was. And we are, th of course, moms here. You got the biggest cheering section here. I can see that. Yeah, we bought the house together tonight, huh? You did, my, did you have dinner beforehand? Oh, we did not. We're going to celebrate tonight. Are you? What are you going to do? Big buffet tonight. Big buffet? I believe so. We're going we're to have a big dinner tonight. Oh, no. At the house? <laughs> what was that? You're going to have the dinner at your house? Yep. Oh, good. Because this meeting should wrap up at about 10 o'clock, so that'll be a good time. Oh, I'm going to stay up late tonight then. What the heck? I got work the next morning. Now, where do you work? I work at Planet Fitness in Aurora. You, you're kidding me. Really? Yep. Is that pretty cool? Mm-hmm. They all supported me over there. I've got a buddy who works at the Planet Fitness in St. Charles named Drew. Oh, I heard of him. Yeah, Drew's a good guy, man. I, I know him. Really good guy. You should work at the one in St. Charles, because then we can train together. Oh, yeah. Now I can push Drew along. Come on now. <laughs> Don't get me started on that one. Don't get, I will not get you started on that one. <laughs> Do you want to introduce your special guests tonight? Yes. Um, this is um, Alyssa Zero. Yeah. She's with the City Hall. And Alyssa and Alyssa and Ben are classmates from Geneva High School. Mm -hmm. We were classmates at Geneva High School. Yep. It was great. To, it was a great little reunion right there. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. and, and Mayor Burns, you could have not picked a better date. This was actually perfect, two for Tuesday. You know, that sounds like something you have to be 21 or older to talk about. But yes, that's true. <laughs> Already 23. I know. Birthday. I know you. August 8th is your birthday. Correct. 8-8, eight, eight, two gold medals, two 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 twenty. 22, this seems just to be like magical. The magic number has hit. It, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. the, the magic number already got pulled right from the lottery ticket last night. <laughs> Dude, if I won, I would not be here, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ben, mom and dad are here? Yeah, that's mom and dad, Christine and Jane Blumen, Scott Perth, coach, and police officer of Batavia. Yeah, do you hear that, folks? <laughs> coach is the community service officer for the city of Batavia. And how long have you and Ben been a team? About a significant number of years. What, four or five years now? Yeah. Isn't that, that's awesome. Feels like yesterday we started together. I bet. And he just, and he just picked me up just because he, um, just because he went, yeah, whatever. <laughs> what? That's very flattering. That's <laughs> it was a very clever move by him. <laughs> well, he's clearly a smart guy because you always want to pick the champions. So. Well, you could say that. Just <laughs> You could say he bought me a couple, and he built us all from the ground up. Well, you've got other folks here, too. Oh, yeah. And uh, my cousins, Kendall and Jay. Kendall and Jay, folks, are from Arlington Heights, mm -hmm. and they, they cruised in tonight to celebrate with Ben, and they also make their own honey. And you brought some honey this evening, yeah. and we believe there might be some sort of commercial co-venture with Ben's face on the honey. <laughs> oh, now we're talking. See? See? You guys gotta get started. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And then we have Auntie Dawn and Uncle Don, my aunts and uncle. Nice. They came down here from Downers Grove. Oh, you're kidding, fantastic. Well, guess what? Our city attorney is from Downers Grove. Nice. For real. <laughs> For real. 
That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? You guys just have to say hi to each other, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have um, Aunt, um, Judy and Scott. Hi, guys. From, from Bartlett, I think. Uh, actually, no, St. Charles. Oh, St. Charles. <laughs> And I'm like your sister. And then my oh. sister-in-law. <laughs> oh, wait, where did the sister, where's Cisco? Oh, I didn't even see your sister hiding out. She's been doing. Ah, she came from Geneva okay. High School till 2014. 2014, I think that was uh, Grace's age. Oh, hey, really? sis, do you know my daughter, Grace Burns? Better, yeah. <laughs> that didn't sound too good, did it, Roger? <laughs> Let me text her. I'll send her the photo. Yeah, oh my lord. And of course, we've got some extraordinary staff from Special Olympics Illinois. Yeah, um, we have Amanda, Caitlin, and Emily from Special Olympics Illinois, who are the staff over there. Um, Emily's the, re um, Caitlin's the regional director. And Amanda, where are you? Amanda? I'm the assistant As director. Assistant director for Caitlin. And Emily's, uh, Emily's one of the other staff members that just started here for Special Olympics Region C. Very good. She started a week ago. I think this will be a good memory for her. This will be, yeah. The first week. Yeah. As a rookie. <laughs> and you're already here at a meeting. How does it feel right now? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and then, um... I think that's it. <laughs> it's a great group. Thank you. Oh, it's an amazing group. It is amazing. I understand you have some prepared remarks. Oh, I do. Um, the floor is yours, sir. All right, I have the floor now. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll be leading the charge for a couple minutes here. It's going to be a fun little speech I got. Hi, everyone. My name is Ben Bluma, and I want to thank Mayor Burns and the City Council welcome me and my family here tonight. I wanted to also thank my family, friends, and coaches for coming out to support me. Growing up with autism was a challenge for me, and it was hard when I, when I was young to find a path for myself. The sport of running changed my life, and it was people like Coach Scott Kurth who took me in to train me how to run competitively that helped me give a sense of accomplishment, confidence, and belonging. Joining Special Olympics has opened up so many opportunities for me and friendships for me. I'm thankful for the hard work that Caitlin Amanda and Emily and the staff with Special Olympics Illinois do for athletes and families. And also Lexi and the people at FESRA, Fox Valley Special Rock Association, to give these opportunities to so many kids and adults with disabilities. I hope to grow my running career Special Olympics and represent Geneva and our state as I move forward with my journey. And also continue to volunteer and help and advocate for the disability community Thank you all so much for coming out again tonight. This means so much to me. I could have not asked for a better night. I could have not asked for a better night, Mayor Burns. Thank it's, you again. It's, it's a great night because you're here, Ben. Oh, yeah. I wasn't busy tonight, and I just came down here. I was so down here. I'm like, yeah, now I'm, now I'm busy. I'm coming down here. Giving my first speech. That, that's your first speech? Um... Uh, I first like public speech. That's, that's, it's fantastic. Fan, fantastic. Thank you so much, everyone. Now, Ben, before you leave the podium, we got some pictures we're going to throw on the screen. Oh, sure, absolutely. Okay. All right, then let's got see a, them. Then I've got a gift for you as well. Oh, I'm excited. I'm in suspense right now, but I'm excited. Well, ask Amanda. It's not that special. Don't get too excited. So okay, I won't get too excited. She knows me well. <laughs> oh, yes, older woman Ruby. Excuse me. Thank you. I, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here. Congratulations. You are a natural speaker and leader, and I think you should be the spokesperson. <laughs> you, are, you are awesome. You did a, a great presentation tonight. Your personality just shone through this room, and everything you're doing is awesome. Keep it up. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. McCready, what do you think? I believe we have to move them down to the front, but I can do that real quick and show the audience. That's awesome. Photos. Yeah. That's Thank awesome. You. Wait, you Thanks for your patience, Ben. Absolutely. Wait, you want to up front, you said? Well, we're gonna, Ben's going to do some stuff on the comp Yeah. OK. If you, tonight, okay. Me, ben. No problem. Nice to meet you, Ben. Nice to meet you, too. Now, Ben, uh, you're wearing your gold medals. Correct. Do you want to show everybody those? Oh, yeah, I do. 
I'm just I gonna... got one for each different events. This is the 800. And then this is the mile. Okay, I gotta ask you a question, man. What was your time? My time in the 800 was 355. Here, Ben, I'm gonna switch it if you wanna come over here by the mic. Oh, no problem. There I'm you go. Um, the eight, the, my time in the 800 was 355. Now, what about the 1600? 759. Just barely broke eight. Yep. And, and it was it was it was cold on the, at the 1600. That is. Moving. It was single digits. Single digits on top of the mountain in Galena. Yeah, I was I was I was having a real hike up there. It, it, and I was sore afterwards. I couldn't even walk. Seriously. Oh, I, 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 I could I couldn't even walk. It, it was actually negative. Yeah. Oh, look at that shot. Holy mother of... Look at that. <laughs> that, was before the, that was before the donuts, Ben. You had to bring that in before the donuts. Come on now. We're the donuts now. <laughs> hey, this is a city, man. We don't have that kind of money. <laughs> so when, you, when that picture of you crossing the line, is that when you know you won? Yeah. Yep. That sure was. Right there. Oh, yep. isn't, that, isn't that something? Oh, it is something. That is amazing. I got to bring in the feeling. Yeah. Well, you shared that feeling with us. That's really cool. Represent my city. I'm proud to do it again. And we're proud that you do. May I read to you something I have for you? Sure, absolutely. Okay. This is a proclamation for you. Okay, this is honoring you. Okay? And it reads, City of Geneva, Illinois, Proclamation. Mayor Kevin Burns and the City Council of the City of Geneva proudly recognize Ben Blumond, for achieving athletic excellence at the 2022 Special Olympic Winter Games by winning gold medals in the 800 meter and 1600 meter snowshoeing competition. In honor of Ben's accomplishment in sport and his dedication to always giving his best at whatever he endeavors, the City of Geneva hereby proclaims Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022, as Ben Blumon Day in the city of Geneva. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Are you kidding me, man? Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes, of course I'll come over for dinner. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. Of course, yeah. That's for you, man. Thank you so much. Look at that. So tomorrow when it's your day, you do anything you want. Sound good? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's my grandkids for free ice cream. Yeah. I'm very proud of you. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be your friend, too. Thank you so much, Amber. Okay. And if you want to sneak out of here, I don't blame you. <laughs> but you want to see your classmate recognized? Oh, I want everyone recognized. Okay, <laughs> it's going to be a long night, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ben, before you leave, we're going to recognize your classmate and our friend and our new, one of our newest employees, Alyssa Zulo. Alyssa, come on up. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, and to the tens of thousands tuning in. <laughs> Alyssa is the city's new utility biller in the finance department. She is a Geneva resident and Geneva High School graduate. Now we know what year, mm -hmm. 2017. 2017. Alyssa received her bachelor's in political science from Colorado Mesa University. Where is that located? That's in good old Grand Junction, Colorado. It is in Grand Junction, no Four kidding. Four hours from Denver. Now why did you choose Colorado Mesa University? I think everyone needs to get out of their home state at some point. And I have family that lives in Colorado. Oh, you do? Well, that's cool. And they said, hey, come out and tour this college. And I fell in love with the professors that I'm vi like I visited there. And that's neat. So I was like, I'm sold. I got to go to Colorado. <laughs> how, how many students at Colorado Mesa? Less than 10,000. So it's pretty small. Well, that's a, that's yeah. actually a good size, though. Yeah, it was, it was very decent. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Alyssa used to work for the Geneva Park District in customer service. Yes. Before we stole you <laughs> away. I'm just in Geneva. I was born in Geneva, too. <laughs> you were born at Delmar? Yes. No kidding. Now, this is according to your 
colleague, Rita Cruz, you are a, quote, great addition to the finance department. I'm happy to hear that. Now, you, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, that's a typo. Oh. Let me this. <laughs> now, Alyssa, you said something on day one, I think it was, that I verified before the meeting. Do you want to share that with everybody else? Oh, I just, I think I mentioned that um, how the mayor was always part of uh, my schooling throughout Geneva and how it was really cool that, you know, it's like come full circle from, you know, you being directly involved with like my school and now I'm working for you, essentially. <laughs> not not for me. I, 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 let me. Let me rephrase <laughs> that. I believe what you said was, oh my God, he's still there? <laughs> That's he, a he used to come to my school when I was in elementary school. I thought he would have been gone by now. That's what, wasn't that more or less what the words were? <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew you were still here. <laughs> Something similar? Something like that. <laughs> uh, you've got a, a big fan with you tonight? Your dad's with you? Yeah, he's one of my number one supporters with my mom. Absolutely. And uh, I drag okay. him here since he should be informed about his government and... He's supporting me. <laughs> That's really, now, so, you, so you flee Illinois, you head out to Colorado Mesa, but you return because why? Because I think it's a privilege to come back here, honestly, and Sweet. to work in, you know what they say, to go out, get knowledge, and then bring it back to your community. Yeah. That's something I hear a lot, and it's an honor to come back and actually work for the city I grew up in and born in and raised in. So, so I'm you, happy you, I can bring that experience back. You know here. all the secrets now. Yes. <laughs> so you receive phone calls from our residents and business owners. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're all pleasant. Oh, uh, yes, yes. It's, sometimes it's tough, right? It can be tough, but I think more than not, like, I feel, you know, just to help someone at the end of the day through it, there's, there's no tough day with that then. That's fantastic. What do you enjoy most about the position? Um, I think I enjoy the most, like, not only getting to work within the city, my department's amazing. Like if you need anything, the finance department, the team there, they can solve any any problem or issue that any resident may be having or business owner. Um, so that's been very awesome to see coming back here. Um, but then also I loved working with the residents um, in Geneva at the park district and I wanted to keep doing that um, in my next position. And so I think it turned out well. <laughs> it turned out very well. And Thursday is a big day for you. It's your birthday. Oh, how did you know? <laughs> did someone tell? <laughs> Actually, the yes. police officer from Batavia told me. Oh. <laughs> got access to those files, so. Yeah, I'm turning 23. Very you old. Okay, over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, I trust that Director Cruz explained to you that on your birthday you bring in the treats. Oh, no, she did it, <laughs> but I would regardless. Is that right, Director Cruz? You can if you want. You're not <laughs> <laughs> oh, for everybody. So that's, I will then. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Happy birthday. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to add or share with anyone? No. About anything? Um, no, it's good to actually, I watched, you know, for in school, I would watch these presentations because I did a lot of reports on my hometown city. So to actually be here is really cool, but... And now you're, going to be part, now you're going to be part of history. You and yeah. Ben are going to be on forever, <laughs> captured on video oh, well. forever. <laughs> well, then I think it's a good start to my career. It is a good here. start. Yeah. And if you need the film edited, let us know. Cause oh, it absolutely. It <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. So thank you, Mr. Attorney. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Any comments from the council for Mrs. Zulo? Or Zuro, excuse Zero. me. Zuro, excuse me. Welcome aboard. We're delighted you're with us, and thank you very much for spending part of your evening with us. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and happy birthday again. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin the business items tonight, I do want to just take a moment. I shared with the council earlier today, uh, the department heads as well. Um, our director of public works, Richard Babica, lost his father, Richard Babica, uh, on the 17th of this month. Uh, Mr. Babica uh, had a wonderful life, served our country as a Marine. He'll be laid to rest on this Friday with full military honors in Bloomington. 
And I promised Rich that we would just take a moment to pause and let him know that we're thinking about him and his family. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, if you need to sneak out, we totally understand. Special Olympic staff, don't go anywhere. <laughs> Thank you all again. Thank you very much. Item four, ladies and gentlemen, amendments to the agenda. Are there any amendments this evening? <laughs> item five is the omnibus agenda. All items marked with an asterisk are considered to be routine by this council, and those items can be considered and voted upon with one motion. Is there a motion? Alderman Swanson makes the motion. Alderman Marks makes the second. Mr. Clerk, whenever you're ready, please take the roll call on item five, the omnibus agenda. Ruby. Aye. Haven. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Kosrog. Aye. Aladra. Aye. Marks. Aye. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. The omnibus agenda has been adopted with nine votes in the affirmative, zero votes in the negative, and one absent. We jump to, forgive me. Municipal bills for payment. We kindly ask our city clerk to read the bills as presented and prepared. Total bills are four million two hundred forty-three thousand five eighty-six and seventy-seven cents. Mayor, I move that we uh, approve and pay the bills as read. The individual items that add up to that amount could be found in tonight's city council packet on the city website. Alderman Bruno, joining us live, makes that motion to pay the bills as presented which are also available in our packets and on the city's website. <clears throat> Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alderman Mayer. Any questions or any comments? Mr. Clerk, whenever you're ready, sir, please take the roll. Caven? Aye. Kilberg? Aye. Kasarag? Aye. Maladra? Aye. Marks? Aye. Mayer? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Aye. And uh, Ruby? Aye. The bills as presented have been approved with nine affirmative votes, zero negative votes, and one absent. We jump down to item 12, presentation of ordinances, resolutions, petitions, and bids. Item 12A, consider resolution number 2022-11, authorizing publication of updated 2022 City of Geneva zoning map. Is there a motion? So moved. Alderman Marks makes the Alderman Bruno, excuse me, makes the motion. Second. Seconded by Alderman Mayor. Ben, is there any recital or anything we need? No. No, sir. Any questions or comments? A voice vote is sufficient, but I will double check with the city attorney. Take that roll. You want to do the roll? Yes. Okay. Roll, Mr. Clerk, whenever you're ready. Kilberg? Aye. Kosrog? Aye. Maladra? Aye. Marks? Aye. Mayor? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Caven? Aye. Item 12A has been approved with nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. <clears throat> Item 12B, consider resolution number 2022-12, authorizing the application for the Kane County Victoria Riverboat Funds and execution of all necessary documents. Is there um, Alderman Kilberg, I believe? Second. Seconded by Alderman Bruno. Any questions or any comments regarding item 12, B as in boy? Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Kasrog? Aye. Maladra? Aye. Marks? Aye. Mayor? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Caven? Aye. Kilberg? Aye. With a vote of nine in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one absent, item 12B, as in boy, has been adopted and approved. Item 12C, consider resolution number 2022-13, authorizing the execution of a fiscal year 2021-2022 budget amendment as presented. Is there a motion? So Alderman Mayor makes the motion. Seconded by Alderman Marks. Any questions? Any comments? Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. 
Baladra. Aye. Marks? Aye. Mayor? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Caven? Aye. Kilberg? Aye. Kostrog? Aye. Item 12C has been approved with nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. Folks, item 13, new business and public comment. Anyone joining us online, Mr. McCready? No one raising their hand at this time. From the dais, any new business? Any update on the girls' basketball game? <laughs> we'll find out. Okay. Yeah, Let's go. Okay. With that, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a motion to adjourn the city council meeting. Alderman Marks makes that motion. All in favor of adjourning the city council meeting, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Fantastic. We're adjourned. We'll take just a couple minutes to transition over to the Committee of the Whole. Uh, I'd like to call the Committee of the Whole meeting for Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022 to order. I'll let the record show that uh, all, all aldermen except Alderman Burkert, uh, Burkhart are, are in attendance. Uh, <clears throat> uh, first order of business. Uh, recommend suspending the rules to permit Alderman Kilberg, as myself, to be the chairman for this meeting and to vote on all action items on this agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Mark, seconded by uh, Kostrog. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Okay, items of business, or excuse me, approve uh, Committee of the Home minutes from February 7th, 2022. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Swanson. Second. Seconded by Mayor. Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Items of business, item A. Consider draft resolution authorizing acceptance of auditing services agreement with uh, uh, Sakich uh, LLP for uh, uh, fiscal years uh, uh, 2022 to 2025. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Mark, seconded by Mayor. Uh, ben, you want to give us a uh, commentary here? Sure thing. The city conduct periodic periodically conducts RFP processes to identify and select an auditor for the purpose of auditing the city and Tricom's financial statements. As an added layer of complexity, there are a limited number of firms that work with public sector clients that are operators of both a, a municipality and an electric utility. Uh, Sickich was determined to be the lowest responsible bidder. Staff responded to questions uh, which have since been posted online this afternoon. And with us this evening, we have Director Cruz to answer any questions. Okay. Uh, do we have any questions from any of the aldermen? Uh, this audit also includes uh, funds that we received as a part of the American Rescue Plan Act. That, that's correct. So yes, the bid does include an, a single audit, which would be part of the ARPA funds or the American Rescue Act funds. It's based upon expenditures only, not the revenue coming in. So we have talked, we've got received our one, first 1 1.4, almost $1.5 million now. The next tranche comes in September, September, but it's all based upon when we actually spend the money. So depending on how we spend the money, it could be two or three years. It just all depends on that. And also other grants that you know, other departments are applying for as well. So when we looked at the cost, we did include the single audit as well. Just not knowing it could be a year, an on year or an off year. Very good. Are there any questions? Thank you. Uh, if we don't have any questions, uh, Anyone in the public uh, would like to comment? If not, uh, I take it we're prepared to vote. Roger, would you please read the roll? Um, sorry, uh, Malaja? Aye. Marks? Aye. Mayor? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Cabin? Aye. Kilberg? Aye. Kostrog? Aye. It's unanimous. Next item on the agenda, item B, consider draft resolution waiving bidding and authorizing purchase of Solanus uh, uh, Prestol Polymer and Solanus uh, Z-Tag Polymer from Sol uh, Solanus LLC. Uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. 
Second. Moved by uh, Kostarog, seconded by uh, Marks. Discussion. Oh, good. Ben. Commentary. Uh, ben, yes. The wastewater treatment plant utilizes polymers to aid in its processes. As a result of price increases, material shortages, and shipping costs, staff has worked with Midwest Chemical and Equipment to identify alternatives for plant operations. Um, staff has identified two recommended alternatives, one for warmer months and another for colder months. Uh, questions, again, were posed and um, posted earlier this afternoon. And, of course, with us this evening is we have Superintendent Van Geiskem uh, to answer any questions you may have about biosolids or polymers. Okay, there is some savings as a result of this. Uh, appreciate your investigating the uh, economic benefit here. As uh, any of the aldermen have any questions that they'd like to ask of uh, Bob? I don't have a specific question because I don't know enough about these polymers to ask a very intelligent question. But could you? Uh, tell us what these what these polymers do and how the basic process works. Sure, they uh, when we use centrifuge operations to dewater and also thicken the biosolids uh, for the final processing, uh, the polymer uh, acts as a coagulant to the uh, biosolids, and it uh, makes it so where we can um, use the the biosolids for land application usually gets it to about 22% solids. And do the polymers then biodegrade eventually or? Uh, boy, that's a good question. I don't have a good answer for that. Okay, I'll try to stump you some more. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, Becky. Thank you, and when you say um, suitable for land use, do you mean as fertilizer? Yeah, we, okay. we uh, once to twice a year, we uh, take the land application uh, uh, biosolids and it gets used on farm fields uh, as a uh, natural fertilizer. Okay, and where does that occur? Uh, numerous farm fields west of uh, town. Uh, we go through a uh, contractor. We've been using Stewart Spreading okay. uh, to contract with and there's all sorts of regulations and testing that, that's involved, and uh, they've been uh, having good results with our with our biosolids. So, are there any finances involved with that? Like, do do we sell it or do we give it away? No, 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 no. We have to pay to have them. Oh, we pay that. Uh, okay. To, to dispose of it. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Any questions from the public? If not, I take it uh, we're prepared to vote. Uh, would you please read the roll, Roger? Marks. Aye. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Ruby. Aye. Cabin. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Kostrog. Aye. Elijah. Aye. It's unanimous. Item C, uh, this is uh, considered draft resolution awarding bid to professional cemetery services for city cemetery services for uh, years two, uh, 2022 through uh, 2027. Uh, is there a motion to approve? Moved by um, Mayor. Second. Seconded by Ruby. Uh, some commentary on this? Yes. Before you is a price agreement for grave openings services at Oak Hill and Westside Cemetery. Uh, current prices are set to expire this April. Uh, staff did solicit and receive proposals for, for continued services. Uh, the one respondent, Professional Cemetery Services, has worked with the city for the past nine years. Um, the contract terms are for five years, and there is a 3.5% increase in the consecutive in each consecutive year. Uh, and of course, we have Superintendent Landers here with us this evening to answer any questions you may have. Uh, for the uh, public's benefit, uh, currently to open a grave Monday through Friday uh, has been $850. It'll go to $890, and then as uh, been stated uh, we're going to see a three and a half percent increase each of those years moving forward uh, for those individuals cremated it's four hundred and twenty five dollars and I believe that's up from four four hundred and then if uh, you want to be buried on a Saturday it's more expensive so that's that's a thousand dollars and then that'll also have a three and a half percent increase over those five years any questions of uh, the alderman anyone in the public 
If not, we're prepared to vote. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Ruby. Aye. Caven. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Kasarag. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Marks. Aye. It's unanimous. Move on to item D. Consider draft resolution awarding bid to Lakeshore Recycling Services, Inc. for 2022 through 2027 for street sweeping services. So Is there moved. a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Bruno. Second. Seconded by Mayor. Commentary? For your consideration this evening is a contract for street sweeping services be between March and November for the years 2022 through 2027. Pardon me just one second. Uh, RFPs were issued via the city website and, and the Daily Herald, yielding one bidder. Lakeshore Recycling Services, the bidder has provided this service for the past five, year, five years and staff reports being pleased with the services provided. Uh, again, joining us this evening is Superintendent Landers to answer any questions. Okay, uh, as uh, for the benefit of the public, uh, uh, Lakeshore will, uh, as they've done in the past, there's eight sweeps throughout the city between the months of March and November. The downtown area gets hit 36 times. It's almost weekly, March through November. And uh, we're going to see a 4% increase annually over the, the life of, that, uh, of this contract if it's approved. Uh, total, uh, total cost uh, is about $81,300 on an annual basis with a 4% increase. Uh, through 2027. Uh, comments from any of the aldermen? Questions? <clears throat> I guess I had a question. Are, have we been pleased with Lakeshore's uh, sweeping? Uh, I know that there's the, the number of companies interested in bidding on this is very limited since the city's given up the equipment. Uh, Lakeshore has essentially had it since since uh, since we moved away from sweeping, I think isn't it uh, that the case? Originally, it started with uh, Hoving sweeping, okay, uh, and then Hoving was bought by Lakeshore, okay. And when I will say that when uh, when that transition happened, the service became much better, okay, for sure. Uh, have we had any complaints about the quality of the sweeping? I know. Is there any way that we can communicate when these, the sweeping is going to take place in an area so we get cars moved? There are some streets in <laughs> our ward where we have uh, solid cars, and uh, essentially those streets never get swept. Sure. Uh, I mean, uh, we announced when we're going to flush hydrants. Uh, is there some way that we could put out a sign that say that this week, please park off the street because uh, we're going to be doing uh, our contractor is going to be doing street sweeping? Yes, I and, mean, that is... And they move pretty fast, too. I just don't know if they give it enough time to really get picked up. Uh, that is on the... my own observation. Sorry, let me interrupt. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, that is indeed on the city's website. The schedule is on there. Uh, we can definitely well, make a better uh, effort. I, I understand sure it's to... on the website, but the thing is, I don't think people necessarily go to the website to check if their street's going to be swept. Mm, I'm just saying... Uh, and essentially, do they work by wards on a... Uh, or what, what's the sequence or... So they've, uh, we've got it broken down into zones. There's five, okay. five zones that they sweep. So um, sometimes they start yeah. on the east side and work their way west. Sometimes they start downtown and work out. Sometimes I mean, they start on the west side and work in. I mean, I, we, we're going to have a sit down with them, and we're going to start um, before this all kicks off here. I mean, obviously there's a reason why we put out signs when we're flushing hydrants. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying I think it's equally important if we're going to be doing street sweeping, and we're only doing it eight times a year, if at least uh, – There'd be some way that we could notify. Now, obviously, yeah, we put it, we post it on the website, but I don't know how many people would actually go <laughs> sure. and check to see if their streets can be swept. Valid, very valid point. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, anyhow, those are just some suggestions, sure. and if you can communicate with Lakeshore on that, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, Amy, um, I, I did have one question from a uh, from a resident about uh, medians. In mm -hmm. areas where generally the garbage kind of it collects on top sometimes is it part of their scope of work to 
get that garbage cleaned off on the top of the median? Not on top of the median, uh, just because the equipment is so sensitive that could potentially break if they try to get up on top of there. Um, yeah. That would be something that we would have to go out there beforehand, sweep it off into the curb and make sure that they grab it for us. So if somebody saw the, uh, an area like that, they should call a Absolutely, you guys. absolutely, yes. Okay. Um, you know, I thought during the brush p or the uh, leaf pickup, the map that showed the progress was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If they do that for a lot street of sweeping, <laughs> it's not a bad idea. It would be really nice. Sure. And people, you know, maybe they don't go to the website now, but if they got in the habit of doing that, because it actually does show how it's going and when they're going to be at your location. Yeah. Absolutely. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Any questions? Uh, yes. Alderman. Just have one question. I just, what makes a good street sweeper? <laughs> so there's two different kinds. Uh, there's a vacuum style that, you know, works on the same principle as a vacuum. And then there's a broom style that uh, um, isn't quite as great because it doesn't pick up all of the fines. Uh, we request that a vacuum uh, sweeper does come in so it kind of sweep, sweeps everything to the curb and then vacuums it up. So. so just because we see that little rotating broom, it still could be vacuum on the inside? Absolutely, yes. Okay. That was it. Thank you. Uh, public, any questions? If not, we're ready to vote. Roger. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Ruby. Aye. Cabin. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Kosrog. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Marks. Aye. Mayor. Aye. Yeah, let's... Item me. Consider draft ordinance uh, restating Title IX municipal services. Chapter 2, Article 9, Section 1, Definitions. Chapter 2, Article B, Section 12, Interconnection Policy. And Chapter 2, Article B, Section 13, Net Metering Policy of the uh, Geneva City Code. Is there a motion to approve? Moved by Marks. Second. Seconded by Kostarag. Okay, commentary on this one. The Climate Equity Jobs Act, otherwise known as CJA, requires that all municipal systems update their policies for interconnection and fair and fair crediting of customer self-generation and storage to comply with the legislation. Before you is the recommended updates to, to, to the appropriate portions of municipal code. And joining us this evening is Superintendent Aaron Holton to answer any questions you may have. Okay, for the benefit of the public, uh, uh, CJA or the Climate Equity Jobs Act was passed by the Illinois legislature last spring or last year and within 180 days this needed to be incorporated into our ordinances and that date uh, is right around the corner March 14th 2022 and this is a housekeeping issue uh, to uh, fully comply uh, with the new legislation uh, is there uh, any uh, questions? Uh, Becky? Thank you. Um, I don't have a question. I just wanted to make some general comments on the electric utility. So if, if now is appropriate or I can do it under new business. No, I think uh, now is as fine okay. a time as any. Okay, thanks. So um, first I'd like to start by thanking Bill Kale, if you can find him in the crowded room. He has joined us in the audience tonight. Um, he's helped me summarize some information that I think is um, going to benefit the public regarding and helping people to understand a little bit about our electric utility. Um, so I'll, I'll be brief, but um, each customer that goes solar means a lost customer to the city of Geneva electric utility. Um, so when one of our customers switches to solar, solar power, then everyone else in the town has to shoulder that burden via a rate increase. A small percentage of electricity use decrease would also mean a savings for the city from reduced peak power purchases outside the 35 megawatt contract. If and when the amount of decreased electric used by Geneva customers exceeds peak power purchase savings, there would be a crossover or break even point. That's what's happening faster in some communities than others, but it would be increasingly obvious that it would be cheaper to vote to shut down Prairie State. We can vote to shut it down. We are the owners. We don't work for Prairie State. It works for us. This is happening in coal plants all over the world. It was illustrated 
specifically for us in the RMI, which stands for Responsible Mining Index, and the RMI report about the effects on Batavia of a prairie state shutdown. Batavia has a story on their website. I encourage everyone to, uh, to check it out. It talks about the history of Prairie State and how they have to sell excess energy on the open market at a loss. If you Google Prairie State on Batavia's website, you'll, you'll get all the information. So the information we have about Prairie State comes from our electric department. Their information comes from NIMPA, and NIMPA's information comes from Prairie State. So the coal plant is telling us the best thing to do is run at maximum capacity to get the lowest unit cost. But they don't compare that to running at less than maximum capacity and making up the difference with market power. If we broach this topic, they warn market power comes from an even dirtier coal plant in Indiana or Missouri. They don't say many of those are shutting down in the next few years because they'll be too expensive compared to the new gas and renewable energy coming online. Closing Prairie State early is scary for the coal plant, but good for the planet. Um, I'm not suggesting that we shut down tomorrow, but transitioning over the next decade is the direction that I would like to see this council go. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone from the public would like to comment? If not, uh, I take it we're prepared to vote. Roger, would you read the, read the roll, please? Bruno. Hi. Ruby. Aye. Haven. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Kosrog. Aye. Malaja. Aye. Marks. Aye. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. It's unanimous. Item F, consider draft resolution accepting a proposal from Sea Power Energy Management to administer participation in PJM energy efficiency and emergency capacity aggregation from 2022 through 2026. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Moved by Mayor, seconded by Marks. Commentary. Electric Division staff requested proposals to administer Electric Division customer participation in the PJM energy efficiency and emergency capacity aggregation programs. Uh, two companies did respond, though one company ultimately did not respond. Uh, joining us here this evening to elaborate or provide ad additional information on this topic is Superintendent Aaron Holton. Okay. Uh, Aaron, uh, would you like to uh, give us a little, uh, little more depth on this, please? Aaron is the Superintendent of Electrical Services for Geneva. Um, actually, I would like to pass this off to Kellen with Sea Power. <laughs> oh, okay. They're actually the the uh, submitted the proposal, and he is a far better expert on this than I am. So, okay, do, uh, would you give us your name again and uh, the company that you represent? Sure, Kellen Bolatino, Sea Power Energy Management. Okay, and I think he's going to need a little help with that. Could you s yeah. state sure. that again? Yeah, Kellen Bolatino. C Power Energy Management. I can How spell it. How do you it. spell Bolletino? B as in boy, O-L-L-E-T-T-I-N-O. -L -L -E Thank you. And Kellen's, Irish. what's that? Irish? Irish Italian, yep. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Sure. Uh, so the program that we are putting in place uh, through the, the city of Geneva is actually uh, free to the commercial and industrial customers. We actually facilitate a program throughout um, all of ComEd and throughout the Midwest. Uh, the PJM, or the Pennsylvania, Jersey, Maryland grid, goes through that entire territory, and my company covers that. I'm here locally uh, in the Chicago market. I actually live down the street in Glen Ellen. Uh, so we connected and responded to the RFP. This is a free program that the C commercial and industrial customers would be able to participate in, capturing back uh, incentives from energy efficiency work, so lighting updates, uh, pumps, motors, uh, new construction that might be coming in, uh, in the absence of the ComEd Smart Ideas program, a rebate program that's in place. So we'd actually would be facilitating the program with the utility uh, for the customer's benefit. The demand response or emergency curtailment program is actually based on grid reliability. So if there is a major outage within the ComEd grid, these customers would actually help to stop a major outage um, or blackout that could occur. One has not occurred in the Chicago market um, ever but it's just to be safe and prepared. So for being on call, they actually receive an incentive for being good energy stewards and partners to the grid. 
and we facilitate the program for PJM. There's no cost, uh, but we do take on the risk uh, and market uh, value and uh, auctions that occur. So we have to pay for their participation up front. So we do take a small percentage, which is outlined in the RFP for their participation. And if a site doesn't show up, they're not penalized. They don't owe us anything. We take on that risk, uh, and that's part of our business. Again, we've been doing this for 25 plus years. I've been doing it for about 10 uh, within the market. Okay, so uh, in Geneva here, we're entering into then, if we approve this, uh, more or less a pilot program, a test program, uh, with our industrial and large general services accounts, right? That's correct. Okay, and uh, as a result, uh, then you'll come in and you'll do a, an annual audit, essentially one day, mm -hmm. uh, where it's announced. You're correct, yes, and, uh, uh, advance notice. And then you're going to determine whether or not they've made improvements yeah so the actual improvements are based on uh, on the site we aren't trying to help them push any improvements or make any changes it's actually as they're making these sustainable efforts and these uh, operational improvements um, we're helping them to find um, additional incentives to cover the cost of them or reduce uh, the return on investment uh, the other program the uh, co emergency capacity program is an annual program and we run a test event uh, that occurs usually at the end of June, and the sites would just show that they can make the energy reductions that they've committed to, uh, and by doing so, they receive uh, the incentives back. Uh, just generally, how how do uh, how do electrical customers respond to this, and uh, do you see that generally what percentage see improvements? Uh, Oh, uh, customers from school districts all the way up to data centers and critical facilities participate in these types of programs. Um, I have customers throughout the Illinois market that are big manufacturers uh, and even you know, small uh, school districts that only have two or three buildings that participate. Uh, and they see it as an annual participation to receive incentives back towards operational and facility improvements. So you see those improvements in a pretty large percentage of the, the people that you're working with? Yes, definitely. Okay, okay. any other questions? Any questions from the public? We have a motion and a second. Uh, Roger. Thank you. Thank you. Ruby. Aye. Caven. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Kasrog. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Marks. Aye. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right next to me. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's unanimous. Next item, public comment and any new business. Uh, does anyone here uh, have anything that they'd like to share with the, uh, the city this evening? Any new business? If not, uh, we have a need to go into a closed session this evening uh, on the purchase or lease of property for the use of the public body. Is there a motion to go into closed session? Uh, moved by Kostrock, seconded by Marks. Uh, you please read the roll. Caden. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Kasrag. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Marks. Aye. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Ruby. Aye. Okay, to uh, facilitate the closed session, uh, if you no longer have any business before the city, we'd sort of ask those here to uh, more or less clear the council chambers. We've moved from the closed session now back into uh, the continuation of the committee of the whole meeting. Is there a motion to reconvene? So moved. Moved by Caven. Second. Seconded by Bruno. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, is there any new business or anything that needs to come before the council that we haven't addressed this evening? If not, a motion to adjourn would be in order. Moved by Marks. Uh, voice vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? See you next week. <laughs>